Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Doesn't really matter what time of night or day. It's I'm still just as glad to get you stop on my channel. Thank you ever so much. I'm Minister Paul J. Byrne. I am the online pastor of the online faith-based community known as the Social Gospel Worship and Learning Center. Based in Atlanta, Georgia, sending all posts and videos around the world about the good news of Jesus Christ. About the good news of the Bible, which is the owner's manual for every human being. That's what the Bible actually is. And I'm using that to communicate this message today. Now, for today, we are continuing our, on, our ongoing study and dissection, if you like, of the Book of Romans. For today, it will be part two of chapter 14. Verses 13 through 23, just those 10 verses. And so, away we go. This is not like church like you've ever seen before. So stick with me on this. I've got some really rich stuff today to share with you. As I said, we will finish Romans chapter 14 today. In this lesson, we will conclude the Apostle Paul's train of thought for the first 12 verses that we studied last week concerning judgments that we may pass on one another consciously or subconsciously Paul's topic was, uh, was regarding matters of financial or social status, racial differences, and matters of faith. The Apostle Paul was talking about passing judgment on what he calls disputable matters of faith, such as eating certain types of foods or observance of religious holidays. Paul was not preaching on what or what not to eat. He was only using this as an example of what he was trying to teach us. The Apostle Paul stated unequivocally that each one should be convinced in his or her own mind. The words or her, I inserted those. They're not, not in the original text, just to let you know. But Paul then continues in this train of thought as he finishes making his point, beginning at verse 13. As if from this point, we're in the scriptures now. We're right there in the Holy Scriptures. And Paul wrote, Therefore, let us stop passing judgment on one another. Instead, make up your mind not to put any stumbling block or obstacle in your brother's way. As one who is in the Lord Jesus, I am fully convinced that no food is unclean in itself. But if anyone regards something as unclean, then for him it is unclean. If your brother is distressed because of what you eat, you are no longer acting in love. Do not, by your eating or drinking, destroy your brother for whom Christ died. Do not allow what you consider good to be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, 
and joy of the Holy Spirit. Because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and approved by men. Close quote. That was Romans 14, verses 13 through 18. Is where the origin of those verses came from. <clears throat> so Paul uh, was talking, to, what was he trying to tell us here? Tolerance, <clears throat> pardon me, tolerance among each other, among, amongst one another, is what is needed. And the need is greater today than ever before. Paul wrote, make up your own mind not to put any stumbling block or obstacle in your brother's way. Here, excuse me, but a tough day today. Here, Paul is exhorting us not to do anything that could compromise or call into question the faith of someone else whether they are a believer or not. If you are a Protestant, don't be putting down Catholics. If you are Catholic, don't express hate for a Muslim or a Jew just because they believe differently than you do. And that's ex ex except, of course, for those who uh, blow things up. They're, they're not counted here. We can and do disagree. That is true. But that does not give any of us an excuse to look down on someone who is who we erroneously regard as being not as good as we are. If you are so far up in the cloud spiritually that your feet are no longer touching the ground, then you have lost touch with the very people you are supposed to be witnessing to and setting a good example for. Faith and belief in Christ, people, is essential. Now, Muslims and Jews do not eat pork. I happen to like pork. I eat it roughly once a week. Sometimes twice if I'm in the mood, but no more. Under no circumstances does that allow me to look down upon someone who abstains from pork. And that works both ways. This also brings up the, the issue of anti-Semitism, which is a scholarly and sugar-coated terminology for hatred of the Jews and all things Jewish. If you are a Christian and worship Jesus in spirit and in truth, then it is impossible for you to hate Jewish people since Ju uh, Jesus walked the earth as a Jewish man. You cannot simultaneously hate the Jews and claim to love Christ. Who died for all our sins. See 1 John chapter 4 verses 19 through 21. To get a quote on that. You either love Christ or you don't. And if you don't believe in Christ, the Bible says you will be condemned for it to hell when your life on earth is over. So watch yourselves. But hey, I'm just doing my job here. Now on the other hand, if you find yourself on the losing side, worshiping a bogus god, such as money and material goods, for example. Hmm, please excuse me. You can change your mind, 
right now and ask Jesus, Lord, if you're really real, if you are the real deal, Jesus, then come and become the Lord of my life. If you love Christ, a Jewish man, then you presumably love all Jews as well. Anything less is completely contradictory and doesn't hold up under serious examination. Moreover, while I certainly don't wish to scold or otherwise cause offense with my readers and viewers, I think it's better to tell the truth and be unpopular than to be well liked for merely telling people the things they like to hear. You know, like some churches today. As a minister of the gospel, it is part of my job to point these things out. And I will not shrink from that duty. Because at the end of the day, it's all a matter of respect. I quote Paul again. Do not, by your eating or drinking, destroy your brother or sister for whom Christ died. Close quote. Excuse me again. Many Christians especially evangelicals, abstain from alcoholic beverages for reason of faith as they see it. Although I was personally was raised as a Catholic, I have been a devout Christian since 1992. But when I first gave my life to the Lord, when I first gave my life to the Lord, that is, as such, I occasionally enjoy alcoholic beverages, but I always do so in moderation. By the same token, if I went out to dinner with evangelicals, I would order a soft drink instead of anything alcoholic. Because it's all a matter of conscience. Now, by the same token, if I went out to dinner with a Muslim or a Jew, I would not order pork ribs and risk offending that person. That would be no better than showing up at an AA meeting with a bottle of beer. By opening that beer at an AA meeting, I would be offending all others at that meeting who must by necessity abstain from all forms of alcohol. As the Apostle Paul wrote, do not allow what you consider good to be spoken of others as evil. Close quote. Instead, we are to be watch, we are to, uh, excuse me, st uh, strive to set a good Christian example for all to see and our every word and action will be watched closely by others and especially non-believers. Now, since Christ died and was risen from the dead on the morning of the third day for us all, we are to treat everyone equally in these matters and not cause someone's conscience to be bothered or compromised by our actions. Anyone who does this would be sinning against that person and against God. Paul then goes on starting at verse 19 and I quote, let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food, 
All food is clean, but it is wrong for a man to eat anything that causes someone else to stumble. It's better not to eat meat, or drink wine, or do anything else that might cause your brother or sister to fall. Close quote. That's Romans 14, verses 19 through 21. And so, Paul's given us warnings about passing judgment on others. The main point of Christianity is belief in Christ Jesus as the Son of God. All other issues of faith, such as what to eat or drink, or for that matter, how we worship as an individual, becomes a side issue and as such are besides the point. Abortion is another example. Although I personally think abortion is wrong, I refuse to pass judgment on those who do not or who may have actually had an abortion sometime in their past. That is between them and God. Judging other people is God's job. It is not mine nor should it be yours. I never presume to do God's job for him, as if I were somehow capable of doing that in a righteous manner in the first place. For the Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God in another part of Romans. And again it is written by the Apostle James be careful how you judge one another, for with the same measure that you judge others, it will be measured back to you. And so, it is far better to show mercy than to pass judgment. At the end of the day, this is where we stop. It is far better to follow what Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount. Which he, when, he's, when he taught, blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Close quote, the words of the Lord. If I bring a bottle of beer to that AA meeting that I talked about a minute ago, and my actions cause one of the people at that meeting to relapse and wind up back at rehab, that sin is not on that person's soul. It would, in that case, actually be on mine. Let it be far from me to cause my brother or sister to stumble and fall because of my action. Because God is watching everything I do and he's listening to every word that I say. As a teacher and a web pastor, I am held to a higher standard than most. And I take that responsibility quite seriously. So it is for all of us. Paul then concludes in verse 22 as follows. And I quote, So whatever you do, so whatever you believe, about these things, keep between yourself and God. Blessed is the man who does not condemn himself by what he approves. But the man who has doubts is condemned if he eats, because his eating is not from faith. And everything that does not come from faith is sin. Close quote. Romans 14, verses 22 and 23. And so, we conclude with this. To be intolerant, hateful, or closed-minded is sinful in God's sight. Paul wrote elsewhere in the book of Philippians that we are to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling between ourselves and the Lord. Quote. 
That is exactly what Paul the Apostle is talking about here. Although we may not believe what others do, or if we have a different kind of faith than our, my brother or my sister, under no circumstances does that give any of us any right whatsoever to condemn what someone else believes. Never believe that our faith is somehow better than others. And never judge someone who is different than ourselves. God made us all in his image and likeness, so says the Bible. You see Genesis chapter 2, right up there in the front of the Bible. First book, Genesis chapter 2. And so, if we have questions or doubts about what someone else believes, we are actually passing judgment on that which God has made, and nobody has any right to question the judgment and intentions of the God Almighty. That is a form of blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, a damnable sin if ever there was one. And so watch out to stay away from that. Stay clear of it. And so we are to be setting a good example of faith for others to look up to. We are charged with that responsibility by the risen spirit of the Lord. Let's all start doing this effectively starting today and from this day forward. By doing so, we can all become better Christians and have a better and more satisfying walk with Christ. Remember that the closer we walk with Christ, the closer we are to God. As we become closer to God, we grow stronger and better through Him by the indwelling of His Holy Spirit that rests on our hearts our minds, even our very souls. And this is a noble and worthy goal for all of us to achieve and to live by. By doing so, we become better Christians and as a better person, that should be the goal of everyone who truly believes. Besides, by doing so, you never know when your actions can influence a non-believer even to the point of winning them over to Christ. And that, everybody, is something that is always worthwhile. And that concludes the message for this Sunday. Um, normally, in a conventional church, right about this time is when they pass around a collection paper, a collection basket. Well, I'm online, so I can't do that. Um, but you can make a contribution if you like. We do need donations. There's no point in sugarcoating it. We're operating on a shoestring budget here. The instructions for making donations are in the uh, comments below. Just read to the end, click on the word more, and the whole thing pops up. You know how it goes. And uh, let's see. We are um, registered nonprofits, a registered nonprofit on PayPal and on Stripe. The email address for PayPal and the login login instructions for Stripe to get to uh, to get to my site. You can also find it in the comment section. If you'd like to subscribe to the blog, the blog subscription for now is free. The instructions for a blog subscription can also be found in the comments below. And so, don't forget to give me a like and a share or two and to subscribe. 
subscriptions to, YouTube, to my YouTube channel is free. There will be a paid version coming where you'll have access to all kinds of merchandise too. So watch for that. And before I go, I want to sincerely thank each and every one of you for the privilege of your time. You are all so very, very much appreciated. And having said everything that I can think of to say, everybody be blessed. Yes, I said, be blessed in Jesus' mighty name.